Yamp, a Mojo Kit, Fender Baseman, Model 5F6A, 1959 design. The Builder, Ron C., a fellow YouTuber in need of assistance. Construction looks excellent. However, looks can be deceiving. Volume reveals parasitics, squeals, feedback, a very unpleasant effect. This is a situation you will discover in the D-Lab zone. So the owner complains that this amp squeals and goes out of control when he turns the volume control past four. So I would guess what we're dealing with is grounding issues. These chrome plated chassis are tough to ground to. If you remember when Fender built these kind of amps on their metal chassis, they actually put a brass plate and they ran all the grounds down to that plate as a single point of contact, okay? These new amps obviously don't have that, so grounding can become quite a challenge, all right? So let's take a look at the grounds. Here is our power cord coming in, going down to a stud off the power transformer. Okay, it's good and tight. Here is the center tab of the power transformer filament circuit. You'd normally see this going to ground. This one is not connected. Instead, he's got the 100 ohm balancing resistors across the lamp that you see when transformers don't have this grounding option. That's kind of interesting. Down here is another ground. The orange wire is actually a ground connection internal to the transformer. And here's the center tap for a high voltage. So now we have two ground points here. Let's see if we can find some more. Alright, now we got our pots. If you take a look at these pots, you will see, like right there, that he's using the case of the pot for the ground. Here too. These grounds normally would go down to that magic brass plate that I was telling you about. But in this case, he grounded to the case so you're relying on the integrity of the case of the pot to this chassis to give you good ground. All right, let's see what these controls are. Ah, volumes, okay. Both of the volume controls are grounded the same way, all right? So yeah, I betcha that's what we're dealing with. And also, if you look down here at the eyelet board, like this cap should go to ground, some of these other components normally would seek ground from the chassis and in this case the ground swoops up and is using the input jack okay so we have multiple grounds right so here's the first thing I'm gonna do before I even turn this amp on I'm gonna get in here and take a look at our grounding we're gonna take our power cord this center tap that center tap and the shield and we're gonna put them to a terminal board that's soldered direct to the chassis so I'll bring all the power grounds over here. Then I'm going to land maybe some lugs down here if I can get to it. And we'll pull the preamp grounds over this way. Okay, so we're going to separate the preamp grounds from the power grounds. That's how Fender did it back in the day. That's what I'm going to do on this one. All right, I've landed a terminal board. You see the strap between these first two lugs. Those are for the grounds because I have like four different ones that are going to come down and I don't want to overload the one terminal, okay? But then the other issue is, is you've got to have enough heat to solder that lug to this chassis, okay? You can't use some little piece of junk 25 watt Radio Shack special, okay? You got to use the right iron and there's only one iron that can do the job that I know of. That's right. You've probably guessing it already. It is Snaws Aramis. Sit back, relax, light up an old ghoul. A lot of people wonder where ghouls come from. Well, they come from all over. They have a lot of ghouls come from Portugal. <laughs> All right, so that takes care of our power transformer grounding, right? So we've got our line cord and the center tap of the six volt filament here.
high voltage and the transformers internal ground here through the strap to the lug to the chassis. All right, next step, we need to get our preamp side ground installed. So what I think I'm going to do is pull these controls back. I'm going to land a couple lugs and put an 18 gauge solid ground runner from one side to the other where everything can hook to. That should do the job. All right, there is the installed 18 gauge ground plane for the preamp section. Next thing I need to do is remove the grounds from all these controls and jacks and swing them down to this wire. This would be the common point for the preamp grounding, which should settle that section down. And that is separate from our power supply grounding. So let's see how this works out. All right, so I'm just loosely putting things back where they were so I can find the ground points and remove those. But I noticed something really odd. Over here is your mid-range and your presence control. And if you look at the schematic, this end of both pots should be going to ground. There's a little green jumper tying this post to this post, but take the old ohm meter, okay, and I touch it to what should be ground, We're wide open on both. So the presence and mid-range were never connected to the ground. Odd, huh? Alright, so the situation gets a little bit better. I want to point this out before I correct it. This pot that you see right here, it says ground on it. It's actually not. This is his bias adjustment for the output tubes. So if you follow these yellow wires over here, it goes to the negative bias filter caps. Okay, So the positive side of those guys should also be going to ground. So let's check. Nope. And if you look at your layout diagram, there's supposed to be a jumper under here that goes to that point. And guess what? That was the ground wire for those two pots that aren't grounded. So somehow ground never made it to these points. He did say he was having problems with that negative bias adjustment. Now we know why. All right, I've resolved all the ground issues. Now we need to clean up these input jacks, get these flying one mega resistors tucked down on the jack itself. And I noticed, if you look right in here, it's kind of hard to see, but these two are supposed to be tied together. See that white powder down there? Well, that's because that lead is not soldered to the bottom jack. Cold connection. So, anyway, I'm going to redo all this, make it nice, add some lock washers. Alright, I've got the input jacks all cleaned up, rewired, looking good. Now I'm going to move over here to this negative bias area. We're going to rewire this pot, clean this area up, land a new terminal board, in the place of the one that was for the 200 ohm balancing resistors. So I'll put the resistors there necessary for this pot to work for adjustable bias. All right, so now I feel comfortable with installing the tubes and powering up the basement. After resolving the ground issues and the negative bias issues and getting the power situated the way I like, I'm pretty sure she's safe to turn on. So what have I done? Input jacks have been rewired nice and neat. We have a ground runner now behind the preamp board. So we're not relying on the cases of the pots for ground connections. Went over here and repaired the grounding on the negative bias section. And I reconfigured that for use with his bias pot. So this terminal board down here has the voltage dividing resistors and I also installed these 1 ohm resistors that are going to the output tube so we can monitor current when we power it up. Also resolved a few bad connections, but all in all, tell you guys the truth, the construction on this thing is great. I inspected his solder connections very closely. It looks superb. Really did a good job. Just missed a few things that made the amp a troublemaker. And now, hopefully, she'll come to life. So I do need to mention, I have done no other work besides what you saw in this video so far, okay? So we're gonna power it up, and I want to make sure that my negative bias is present. So I have this little clippity-doo-dah hooked right to 
pin 5 of the output tube. Okay, so we're going to watch the negative voltage coming through that grid block resistor. So I'm flipping on my variac. Right now, there's no tubes installed. There is my negative bias. So let's see if I can get this to drop on the slot. Let's see if she'll adjust. Alright, so we're going to adjust the negative bias. Just make sure it works. And it does. So I'm going to leave it at the maximum negative bias because I want minimum current through those tubes when I first bring her up to make sure that my bias has the proper range. If not, I may have to adjust my little voltage dividing network. As a precaution, I'm checking the output tubes, make sure that they weren't harmed because as you know, the negative bias system in this amp was not correct. The grounds were not on those filter caps so it could have damaged those tubes from overcurrent, but it doesn't appear as though it had happened. Alright, so I've got the amp powered on my Variac, watching things closely. She's coming up, pulling cathode current. Looks stable. So now I want to clean up the wiring on the base of the output tubes. Alright, here's that final output section I told you I was going to clean up. So I moved the 470 ohm resistors down next to the bases so they weren't sticking up here. I put my grid block resistors right in between pin 1 and pin 5 like Fender does. Kind of rerouted things, made her look nice and pretty. It's time to test. Hey guys, I've got Tony in the shop to check out Ron C's basement amp. Okay, saw the grounding repairs and it looks like it's working great, but I got the master here to tell me the truth. <laughs> All right, man. Master and the slave. Hi, <laughs> Ron. Your amp uh, sounded really nice and clean. It's got an extra lot of headroom in it. As per uh, Terry's specifications. So not only did Ron C. send me this cool amp project, he also sent us a little surprise. From wine.com, address to Terry and Marsha. I wonder what's in the box. Let's open it up. All right, so there's a little note in here I want to read to you guys. I think it's very cool. It says, Marsha and Terry, thank you for providing great videos and entertaining us. Also, thanks for looking at my amp, which is on the way to you. It's already here. Uh, Ron C, enjoy the wine both on and off camera. <laughs> well, I'm going to enjoy some of it on camera right now. Okay, let's, let's get it out of here. Oh, what do we got? Oh, man. What is this? How do you drink this? <laughs> oh, messing around. I'm always messing around. Look at that. Yeah. And you know what? It's not a screw top, so it's a good thing Marsh is over here with the wine bottle opener. Let's Let the it. experts show you how to open it. Let's do it. Okay. The expert. See, I chew off the label. Yes, you do. I do. And somebody actually caught me in one of my videos doing that. All right, All right Marsha managed to open that bottle for me. <laughs> I'm not capable of doing that. Uh -huh. But this is a 2017 cab, Napa Valley, California. And you guys know I love my reds. So... Let's give it a shot. I need my bell. Where's my bell? Ding, what? ding, 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 Yeah, ding. ding, ding, ding. Okay, I guess I pour it myself. Here we go, oh guys. Oh, my goodness. Me and Captain Laser having a little vino. By the way, Captain Laser is a toy that I got when I was eight years old. He's still with me in the shop. Here we go. Let's try the old wino. Junko can't say no. It's very good. Yeah, it's kind of... What do you want? 
Ron, thank you very much, man. It was a pleasure repairing the amp for you. And it's really a pleasure drinking this wine. And the thank price you, is Ron. right. Thanks, Ron. We'll see you guys again.